Hi, my name is Lexi and welcome to Artopia. On this week's episode, we will learn all about art curation from creating artwork in a studio all the way to displaying amazing creations to the public. Today, I am at UniSQ ready to experience the art of ceramics with PhD student Joanna Park. But first, over to the studio where we will introduce you to a local arts curator to discuss their art curating journey. Thank you, Lexi. Hi, everyone. I'm Cherish, and today I'm here with a very special special guest, Brody Taylor, the UniSQ Arts Curator. Welcome, Brody. Thank you, Cherish. Pleasure. <laughs> now, can you tell us what an arts curator is and what you, exactly you do? Well, here at the university, I'm a bit more of a jack of all trades. So, uh, in the industry, curators are they're the storytellers. They're the ones who take the artist, their artwork, and really, how do we bring that into the gallery space and tell the story that they're hoping to tell? Uh, here at the university, um, I'm everything from the collections registrar to a, to a technician to a painter to a, I sand walls, I move things around the gallery and I an event coordinator as well. So uh, here it's a little bit of everything but in the industry our, our main forefront is just good storytellers. Mm -hmm. And can you walk us through the process of becoming an arts curator? Well for me it was completely by accident. I, I found my, myself here purely at the whim of somebody thinking that it would be a good idea. Uh, I was working in, a, uh, in the bookshop here at the university and I was asked to come on and do some casual work looking after the art collection. And one thing led to another, my career started to develop and grow and I, one day I found myself looking after the entire gallery space. Uh, for the most part, it starts at a university level. Nearly every curator has tertiary qualifications. Uh, most of their journey started there. Many of us started as practicing artists as well. Uh, a lot of us still maintain our own arts practices. Uh, it really helps to work with the artists if we know what they're going through and we know sort of what they're trying to achieve because we've been there ourselves. Um, so for most, it'll start at a, at a university, usually museum studies or gallery studies, curatorial management, along those lines. Because uh, there's a lot of lot more than just does it look all right on the wall? It's how does the exhibition flow? How does the information we're trying to impart actually, uh, is it succinct enough? Is it clear enough? Um, there's a lot more to it than just does it look all right? <laughs> and how long does it usually take to curate an art space? Well, we work with our artists from about 12 months out. So it takes about 12 months to bring the show from conception all the way through to final delivery. Uh, the actual physical hands-on work there in the gallery space takes about a week. So from Monday to Friday, we're in there moving walls, patching, painting, uh, doing concept work, and also just laying things out to see how it feels. Because you can design anything with a pen and paper, but when it's there in front of you, it's very different. And sometimes you need to adjust, sometimes you need to change. Uh, and that's where those uh, weak installs are really beneficial. The artists and I generally work very closely together to just see, okay, what is working here and what doesn't? If it doesn't work, how can we fix it? Because um, we don't want to open the doors until it is, until it's right. And what is involved in successfully installing an artwork? Well, there's a lot of maths, to be honest, but also a lot of creative vision. So you have to have good mental gymnastics. <laughs> you need to be able to envisage what it's going to look like quite well and be able to hold that image in your mind. Um, there's a lot of nuanced things as well. So. An artwork is uh, expected to be a certain height off the ground. The middle of the artwork should be 152 centimetres. Sounds very specific and nuanced, but it's considered the national accepted eye height. If the artwork is any higher or lower, even if by a few centimetres, that's enough for our human mind to go, something's wrong. We might not be able to pick up exactly what it is, but something won't quite be right. Uh, I spend most of my working life with gloves on because the human uh, oils and natural salts that are secreted by our hands can be quite damaging to the artworks. Mm. Um, so everything we do is with the artwork in mind. So how can we ensure that not only we're treating it with the utmost respect, but making sure that it's safe and that we're not damaging it in the process of installing it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brody, for telling us your knowledge and inspiring stories. Unfortunately, that's all we have for time for today here in the studio with Brody. However, Lexi has another exciting guest to introduce you to. Welcome back. 
let's head over to the ceramic studio to meet local artist Joanna Park. Welcome Jo, can you tell us a little bit more about when you first realised you were passionate about ceramics? Thanks, um, yes, yeah, so basically in first year um, of my undergrad degree because in high school and throughout, throughout my life I suppose um, I've always been interested in drawing but I hadn't had the chance to really experiment with ceramics because it's an amazing art form but it's very complicated in some ways and you need some very heavy duty equipment so drawing it's always just followed me I can do it anywhere um, and I've developed that over time but then once I got my hands on some clay for the first time it was like wow what is this this is really cool so yeah hmm. um, what inspires your ceramic artwork um, architecture so the built environment in these everyday spaces that we live in can you walk us through step by step how you make your ceramics um, yes, so I like to slab build, which is basically, if you think of it like a sheet of pastry, you roll it out, um, so you can use a slab roller, which is this big thing that gets it super nice and even, and mm -hmm. then cut out the shape you want, and then join. So if I were to make a cylinder, like this work is an older work that a little bit of explosion in a kiln, but um, it'll do. You like roll it out and then join it. You score the edges. So rough up the edges that you're gonna join and then use a bit of slip, which is basically just the same clay body with water added. So it's more of this paste consistency and then you use that to connect it. And then the firing process. So if you have a, a small kiln, it probably takes about 24 hours to 48 hours to heat up and then cool down. So that's the bisque firing, which is the first firing process. Then the glaze and then fire it again. So about 24 hours, 48 hours. Now I understand you currently have your artwork on display in the A Block Gallery at UniSQ. Could you show us some of your artwork? Yes. Yeah. Resumption of nature. So it's basically the summary of our um, exhibition Time and Place. So Time and Place is an exhibition by me and Peter Osborne where we took both our research um, practices and combined them. We created this installation together. So I made the built forms and Peter made the very the wavy um, sections that are more looking at the surface. So we have ceramics. Mm -hmm. What kind of art, other artwork do you have in this? Um, the other things I have are drawings, um, which are very detailed pen and ink, but then also I've been playing with ink washes, which are very loosely painted on. What do you hope people get from experiencing your art? Curiosity about buildings and then in turn about each other, probably the main thing. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling quite inspired. So hang tight while we head back to the studio to learn more about what is happening in the Toowoomba arts community and how you can get involved. Thank you, Lexi and Joe. Isn't it just incredible what a talented artist can create starting with just a single slab of clay? Now for what's happening in the region this month. Don't forget this Friday evening, August 4th at the Empire Theatre, Camerata Via Violin presents an enchanting evening of Mellison and Rosini joined by violin soloist Katharina Lee. Hello Gorgeous, the Barbara Streisand songbook will be on at 11am August 24th at the Empire Theatre. To see a retelling of Shakespeare's romantic comedy, you'll want to be at the Empire Theatre on August 31st at 7.30 to see the Bell Shakespeare Twelfth Night. That is all the time we have this week. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Artopia. See you next week where we meet some amazing local talent for our final episode of the season. Bye for now.